So last week, Twitter users noticed that JK Rowling was conspicuously absent, and notably, she stopped tweeting a couple of days before Variety reported that she had been named in Imani Khalif's lawsuit, along with other individuals like Elon Musk and Donald Trump, all who falsely called her a man. Now, to make matters even more suspicious, JK Rowling deleted dozens of tweets, none of them about Imani Khalif, by the way, but nonetheless, still pretty uncharacteristic behavior for her. But after two weeks of silence and all of us speculating that maybe she wasn't tweeting because she was afraid of incriminating herself further in Imani Khalif's lawsuit, guess what? JK Rowling has finally returned to Twitter. And in her very first tweet back, can you guess what she decided to do? Just take a wild guess. She decided to defame Imani Khalif again. I'm not making this up. So she shared a quote from an article about Imani Khalif's makeover, which reads, quote, it's important to highlight that launching a PR campaign and applying layers of thick makeup requires far more time and effort than simply making DNA test results public. And the very first sentence in the article that she shared falsely claims that both Imani Khalif and Lin Yu Ting are male boxers when they are, in fact, not males, which is a fact that J.K. Rowling is almost certainly aware of by this point. In other words, she is doubling down, but she's doing so in the creepiest, most Weasley way imaginable. And I say Weasley because she's trying to give herself plausible deniability by quoting someone else who's defaming Imani Khalif instead of directly defaming her herself as she did before. Uh, but furthermore, she's also calling on a woman to prove that she's a woman by taking a DNA test and publishing said results for everyone to see as if it's our business. I mean, this is not normal behavior. As Celia put it on Twitter, don't worry, everyone. Now, instead of just being a woman, all we need to do is send JK Rowling our DNA and chromosomal testing via certified mail unsealed and directly from the testing agency of her choosing. Yeah, apparently that's how you satisfy JK Rowling's requirements for being a woman. If you don't do that, then you're not a woman in her eyes if she suspects that you're not a real woman. But she shouldn't be asking Imani Khalif to prove that she's a woman. She should be working on her legal defense right now because based on her past and current Twitter activity, the only thing that JK Rowling has proven is how deranged she is. And just to uh, you know put this into perspective, right-wingers have already moved on from this story, but JK Rowling is still doubling down against her better judgment, all because she refuses to just take the L on this. As Alejandro Caraballo put it, she tried to listen to her lawyers and stay off of Twitter, but the mold in her home told her to tweet about Imani Khalif again, and of course she listened to the mold. And people were joking about this because it's objectively funny to see a grown rich person who literally lives in a castle and calls trans women misogynists all day demand that another woman prove to her that she's a real woman. First of all, who the fuck do you think you are, JK Rowling? She doesn't have to prove shit to you. No woman does. You may be rich, but nobody made you the authority on women and who is and isn't a real woman. Like, where do you get off thinking that you can demand this of Imani Khalif? Second of all, women can also be misogynistic towards other women and telling another woman that she's not woman enough that is the height of misogyny. So even though it's in her best interest to just shut the fuck up right now about Imani Khalif, she can't help herself. She just can't help herself. Being misogynistic and transphobic is like a compulsion to her. Now, JK Rowling hasn't tweeted a lot since being back on Twitter, but you know, take a guess as to what her other tweets are about. Well, it's about transphobia. So she replied to a picture of a tweet somebody posted, presumably of her standing next to a furry. I'm not sure if this is a real picture, but she is presumably mocking trans people in response, saying furry bears are bears. And then she says to stop dead naming Yogi Bear. Now she continued with this boomer line of attack against trans people, saying cat person thing. Have some respect. You're talking about the urso sexual by pan afab I love. And she continued goofing back and forth with a fellow transphobe. Oh, and she also retweeted a turf senator from Australia because, of course. But I mean, even though she thinks she's being cute, she's not cute. This isn't clever. This is literally the same argument that conservatives were making against same-sex marriages. They were saying, oh, well, you know, if a man can marry a man, will a woman be able to marry a dog? And now she's essentially saying, well, if a woman can transition into a man, can a man transition into a bear? Got him. Trans people owned. Good job, Joanne. Very clever. Now, I think she's going to have to get a lot more creative to keep up with conservatives in the United States because they've already just started saying that kids are identifying as cats and shitting in litter boxes at schools because, you know, trans people did that since you can change your gender. Then I guess you can change your species as well, which nobody is saying. But nonetheless, that's 
the line of attack that they're using. But, you know, the point is that she's behind on her transphobic talking points. But apparently, you know, she's not afraid of Imani Khalif's lawsuit after all, as we all suspected, as evidenced by her tweets about Imani Khalif, or I should say her one tweet about Imani Khalif, where she's quoting somebody else to give herself plausible deniability. But I do have a theory. I don't know if she's scared of the lawsuit necessarily, but it is apparent that she's very aware and hypersensitive to criticism that she receives online. And my theory is that the internet may have actually inadvertently goaded her into tweeting about Imani Khalif again. So hear me out. On the day that Twitter users discovered that she was deleting tweets and discussions about her deleting tweets went viral, guess what happened? She stopped deleting tweets. So if you look at her activity via Social Blade on August 21st, the day where we all noticed that she was deleting tweets, guess what she did for the next three days? She stopped deleting tweets. So maybe she saw people talking about her deleting tweets and stopped deleting tweets because she didn't want to fuel speculation and because she also wanted to prove them wrong. Now, that could be just a simple coincidence, nobody knows for sure, but allow me to submit to you one more piece of evidence. So this was JK Rowling's Twitter profile pic. That is, until people started looking closely at it and wondering if the stuff behind her on her walls was black mold. Now, to me, it looks like black mold, could be wallpaper, who knows? Nobody knows for sure, but it took off and everyone was talking about her potentially having black mold growing on her walls, and they were memeing about it and speculating whether or not it was responsible for the brain rot that she clearly has. But once she possibly took notice of everybody making fun of her, she then changed her profile pic and she took a selfie from a different room in her castle. But then people started to question whether or not the phallic shaped pink thing by her left ear was a dick or not, and people started to make fun of her for taking a picture next to a dick. But what happened next was truly shocking. So she changed her profile picture, again, predictably taking a selfie in a different room in her castle without mold or a dick, but this time, blurring the background so nobody can see what's behind her and nobody can make fun of her for having mold or dicks behind her. So what does this tell us, aside from the fact that there's probably more mold and dicks behind her that she doesn't want us to see? Well, it indicates that she's aware of and sensitive to the things that people say about her. And it logically follows that if she was presumably embarrassed about the things people were saying about her profile pictures, she's also embarrassed by speculation about her being afraid of Imani Khalif's lawsuit. And her ego just couldn't accept that so many people assumed she wasn't tweeting because she was scared. So she had to prove everyone wrong by tweeting once again, about none other than Imani Khalif, albeit more cautiously by quoting somebody who is, you know, still defaming her, but at least she's not directly implicating herself here. She can say, look, I was just quoting somebody else. I didn't say it myself. Now, if you think I'm reading too much into this, you have to remember, we're not dealing with an ordinary multimillionaire here. JK Rowling is perhaps more terminally online than Elon Musk. And one thing that's become increasingly clear over the past couple of years is that she has this overwhelming desire to be loved and to win back the people that she's lost due to her transphobia. Because remember, she just dabbled in transphobia at first, but she decided to double down and dig in after people started questioning her because she's obsessed with this fact that people don't like her anymore, which is why she's become obsessed with trans people, right? It's ruined her. Remember, she even quote tweeted me and she sicked her fans on me. To her, she doesn't know that I'm like the host of the Humanist Report, not that that means anything, but you know, I'm just a random person on the internet and she decided to quote tweet me to sick her fans on me because she saw my criticism. Like I'm an internet shit talker. I talk on the internet and share my opinions. The best case scenario is if you see me talking shit in your mentions, you ignore me. But she didn't do that because she's obsessed with what everybody is saying about her. So it's not like she's ignorant to criticism that she's receiving. I mean, this woman is in the final stages of brain rot. She knows what we're all saying about her. So that's why I say that I think that the internet may have inadvertently goaded her into tweeting about Imani Khalif again, because she couldn't not prove us wrong. That's what she's been trying to do this whole time with the transphobia. You know, here's what this doctor says about why trans people are bad. Here's what this person says about why I'm right and everybody else is wrong, right? She couldn't allow our speculation and shit posting and memes to go unchecked for too long so she had to return to twitter to set the record straight but in doing so she confirmed that she is very much aware of every little thing that we say about her which is interesting because even though she's a billionaire regular ass people online 
can have a significant amount of power over her by simply tweeting at her, which is pathetic. But nonetheless, you know, that's the reality of the situation. So I don't know where the saga is going to end with regard to her and Imani Khalif's lawsuit or if she's even going to be held accountable for defaming Imani Khalif. But one thing that I'm pretty certain of is the fact that everyday people can hold J.K. Rowling at least minimally accountable. So if you call her out after she defames somebody or lies about trans people or spreads misinformation, as she tends to do pretty frequently, there's a decent chance that she's going to see what you say about her. So, you know, pretty embarrassing and pathetic, but that's J.K. Rowling. That's who she's devolved into. And uh, it's embarrassing, but, you know, that's J.K. Rowling. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, F around and find out. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. Play stupid games, gay pride. Trans rights are human rights. It is necessary to push trans on the kids. Gay, 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 gay